sister, rather the, the sister city Peace Gardens on September 13th. That'll take place at uh, the Peace Park uh, on the corner of the Land Park, at the end of Michigan Avenue, and that'll take place at 4 o'clock p.m. We also have a Come Together event on September 14th. This is in conjunction with SCIO and the Farmer's Market. Um, this is an event celebrating unity in our community. Uh, Fountain Park uh, will be uh, taken over by this event from uh, band to band shell from 11 a.m. until 4 o'clock. This is um, the third year for this event. It's a non and nonprofit organizations will have booths on site. You can enjoy live performances from local musicians and performers on the band shell stage. Esslingen Fest is coming up on September 15th. Uh, from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock at Three Sheep's Tap Room. Uh, this is an event that's put on by the Mayor's International Committee to draw attention to our sister city from Esslingen, Germany. And as they heard that we were honoring them with this festival, they planned their visit to Sheboygan this year so that they could participate. And not only are they going to uh, be there, but um, they're going to get together on the Saturday night before and make some of their uh, German specialty menu items, and those will be served at, at Esslingen Fest. So this will be a real treat, and we hope everybody gets a chance to enjoy it. And then the all public is also welcome to join Glacial Lakes Conservancy in the celebration of the Willow Creek Preserve on Saturday, September 28th from 1 o'clock till 3 o'clock. The event will include uh, some speeches, a ribbon cutting, light refreshments, and an opportunity to go on a short nature hike to explore the property um, at that point. Thank you. The uh, next item is going to be um, our 2020 Executive Budget Program. Daryl Hoffman will deliver this program. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Um, a few minutes before uh, tonight's meeting, uh, the budget and brief, as well as the 2020 Executive Budget, uh, was posted to the city's website. So all the details associated with my presentation uh, are available for your review and uh, consideration. As, as council members, you have received a copy of the budget and brief. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, um, Marty Hoverson, Director of Finance, or uh, key members of our uh, management team who are uh, substantially present here tonight, including Eric, who's probably hiding behind me if the camera's on him. <laughs> um, tonight, I have a series of slides. Uh, and I will go through uh, some of the key elements associated with uh, this budget. One thing to mention is that this is the first year that the city has used uh, a budgeting software module. This directly utilizes information uh, from our enterprise resource planning software, Munis. Uh, because this is a, a beta version, um, we probably have some tweaks uh, that will continue to be made uh, prior to you as Common Council taking action uh, on the budget uh, typically at your first Monday meeting in November. With that, I'd like to kick off uh, my slides. Uh, any budget uh, for the city really begins with our mission and vision statement. So I put together that for, for your reading. Next is the vision statement. Uh, both the mission and vision statement were critical as the city considered uh, back in 2017, its strategic plan. Included in the strategic plan are six focus areas of which, again, we attempt to build on and implement through our budgeting effort. In addition to our strategic plan, uh, reality sets in as far as dealing with state mandates. Uh, the two key mandates uh, are uh, tax levy limits as well as expenditure restraint program. Um, the budget that's being presented to you uh, does keep uh, intact several local or common council uh, based uh, guidelines. And that includes an equalized tax rate at CPI or lower. Also, another guideline is to have a minimum general fund fund balance of, of 25%. Of the city's uh, proposed uh, levy, 
Again, this budget conforms with state law. The city uh, has restrictions on uh, how much the city can raise. It's typically based upon the new tax base uh, as well as a limited uh, consumer price index. For the upcoming year, uh, we had only three million of additional tax base to work with. All the other uh, construction in the community was located within a TIF district. So for health insurance, wages, uh, utility uh, increases, all that uh, was working from only a $3 million tax base. Also, as, as you know, uh, the city has uh, uh, imposed or increased uh, our debt service. And again, every year going forward, of course, uh, we need to pay back the bondholders. The 2020 budget tax levy uh, overall for operational and debt service is 1.38. For the city's expenditure restraint program, again, this is a state mandate uh, if the city wants to participate in this reward program. The Wisconsin Department of Revenue allows the city to increase its general fund operations, which again is where most of the city's salaries are located. Uh, this year it's 0.6% of the city's tax base, which is our net construction, plus 60% of our net construction uh, and then we get to add 1.8, which is our estimate for CPI or consumer price index. Uh, this amount will not be known until probably the last week of October, but prior to you considering and possibly taking action on the budget. Uh, so uh, overall, a 2%, if you add those percentages together, a 2% increase is allowed in order to remain eligible for the expenditure restraint program. A year ago at this time, we were looking at 2.6. Uh, 0.6 tenths is, is a lot when you're think, considering uh, developing a budget. The reward the city received this past year is $744,000. So again, it's critical for the city to maintain its eligibility for uh, this program. Equalized tax rate. Again, this is a local uh, decision by the Common Council. With the consumer price index being, at, again, estimated at one8 the executive budget recommends an equalized tax rate decrease of 1.55%. The 1.8% as it compares to prior years, a year ago we were looking at uh, 2.4, prior 2017 is two, um, and in 2016 was actually just uh, three tenths of a percent. So 1.8 uh, is roughly average of what we've seen over the last five years. As I mentioned, the recommended equalized tax rate is a decrease of 1.55. Uh, that is 14 cents per thousand less. Equalized tax rates takes into consideration of properties appreciating or depreciating. Uh, this past year, the average property in the, in the city of Sheboygan uh, appreciated at roughly 3%. If you were to consider a property that has not changed in value from last year to this year, no building permits, no additions, uh, no new construction associated with it. So looking at what people wrote their checkout for from one year to another for property taxes, that tax rate would be, uh, would be 15 cent increase. So if, uh, approximately $105,000 is the value of a typical residential property in the city of Sheboygan. So that means a $15 increase in taxes for city purposes. Next slide. This shows, again, that tax rate increase and the change over the last five years. As I mentioned, a 15 cent increase uh, from the, again, these numbers are off uh, a year purposely. Uh, so in 2019, the tax rate is approved for funding the 2020 budget year. So everything is off by roughly a year. Uh, a year ago at this uh, time, we were considering a 17 cent increase, the prior year 19 cents for comparison purposes. Next is fund balance. Again, a guideline approved by the Common Council is to maintain a fund balance uh, at minimum of 15% of the general fund. This is to create a financial, financially responsible safety net for unanticipated expenses. This is a key consideration by Moody's Credit Service 
in their annual review as the city issues debt. The 2020 budget, executive budget fund balance is approximately 44%, so we substantially exceed that minimum 25%. At the end of this year, it's expected that we will go as high as 50%. But again, I'll discuss a little bit later the need to use some of that fund balance to, in essence, balance the 2020 recommended budget. Next is a chart showing that minimum 25% fund balance as a, as a goal or guideline, and then showing the actual fund balance. So the blue is in the front, which is the target, and the gray in the back is our actual, so you can see that, again, we substantially exceed. Again, uh, for 2020 executive budget, 44% uh, is what is estimated to be end of 2020 after all the purchases and revenues are received. Next is the city's budget facts. Uh, this is really a one-page synopsis uh, of uh, what's going on as part of the 2020 budget. In your budget and brief packet on page 14, uh, again, I know this is kind of hard to read with a small font, but on page 14 is that summary. City of Sheboygan, uh, overall, uh, the recommended plan is $103 million worth of expenditures for 2020. Uh, this is a composite of 95 individual budgets. So the city's accounting process, our activities, are very are varied and, and ultimately complex in that it makes up ultimately 95 individual funds. Uh, it's probably easiest to describe the change, and again, the change being uh, the amount of increase or decrease in, in a budget uh, or the levy associated with it to fund the operations. You can see under the change column that uh, the levy required for the general fund, the recommendation is to increase roughly 173,000. Uh, the levy required, additional levy required in the special revenue fund category is roughly 24,000. Uh, this specific dollar amount is going toward the library to help, uh, to help them additionally. Under debt fund expenses, the additional levy uh, that's being recommended is approximately $120,000. Capital improvement fund expenses, no change in the funding level uh, as it pertains to levy, property tax levy. Fiduciary fund expenses, zero is assigned to this account. And then the last is proprietary fund expenses. Under this category, only transit receives property taxes compared to the other funds located within this account. And uh, a very slim additional amount of a little over $5,000 is support is my recommendation for their operations. So all in all, again, $103 million uh, uh, recommended for expenses. Uh, the approved budget for 2019 was $123 million and change. So a uh, $20 million decrease, roughly a 17% drop. The next is a, is a stacked bar chart, uh, which shows which, again, which categories of our activities or funds received uh, funding support. Uh, you can see really not a lot of changes uh, from one year to another. The red bar, which represents general fund, again, which is our operation fund, is increasing slightly over that time. Uh, the rest of the funds, again, are receiving uh, limited increases over the five-year period of time. So red is general, green is special revenue, pink is debt, uh, blue is capital and orange is transit. For the tax levy itself, overall, it's roughly $322,000 increase. Approximately $175,000 is coming from existing property taxpayers. Only $27,000 is coming from new construction. So again, with that roughly $3 million uh, of assessed uh, valuation, uh, limited coming from new construction. As you know, during calendar year 2018, the city had a lot of construction, but most of that construction was within a TIF district, not eligible for funding our general operations. And for existing properties, specifically assigned to additional debt service, roughly $120,000. Again, 
overall uh, 322,000. A year ago at this time, the levy increased by 446, and in 2018, uh, $1.2 million. So again, a lot of development was occurring outside TIF districts in calendar year 2017 to support the 2018 budget. Personnel changes for 2020, uh, an additional uh, full-time grant coordinator in city development, which will be substantially supported by non-property uh, tax dollars. Uh, a lot of our special funds uh, will uh, underwrite the cost of that position. And another position that will not be property taxpayer supported uh, is a distribution technician. This full-time position is supported by the water utility. Uh, some reductions, uh, one full-time equivalent network administrator. Originally, this position was planned to be filled July 1st, 2019. And two and a half position reduction in public works, uh, maintenance worker uh, level two positions. Last is I want to uh, identify, uh, again, we have a major change in service uh, and, and where that service is uh, funded. Uh, as you know, we discussed approximately five, six months ago, uh, the movement as far as a base funding from the general fund to its own, um, to its own proprietary fund, and that is the planned recycling changes going to a cart system for, in 2020. So two positions have been transferred out of the general fund to this new proprietary fund, which is uh, logically uh, identified as the recycling fund. Overall public works in 2020, we'll see a, a two and a half position reduction. 2020 uh, general fund revenues. Uh, pie chart probably is the best way to describe uh, the major activities within the uh, general fund uh, revenues. Uh, blue and purple are the number one and number two. Uh, roughly 43% is property taxes in blue and purple. It's uh, approximately 38 intergovernmental revenues between the two, these two categories represent 81% of our revenues be, uh, bringing in funds, again, to fund our, our operations. The next table, uh, again, gives you a comparison of 2019 to 2020 request. Uh, what's interesting is if you look at the percentages as far as pieces of the pie, there really is not any, any material changes. Uh, from one year to another as far as major revenue sources. Some of the changes that are uh, part of the recommended budget on the next slide is again, uh, the property tax increase in the general fund, 173,000. The recycling grant is actually dropping in this fund because we're reallocating a portion of the recycling grant into that new recycling fund, which is a, a proprietary fund. The applied fund balance, I'm recommending a $354,000 increase over what you approved a year ago. Interfund transfers, $140,000 and change coming from municipal court. And I'm recommending uh, an increase in transferred funds from the tourism uh, fund. My goal is that 10% of the room tax received, 10% of that, those funds should be transferred to help the general fund operations. And this budget incorporates that concept. Next is a pie chart. Again, red and green are the largest two pieces of the pie. Red being public service, our public safety at 57%, and public works at uh, 24. So between the two, uh, almost 80% of our budgets, our general fund expenses, are associated with these two large service categories. On the next slide, if you compare 2019 to 2020, Again, you'll see not a significant change as far as how the, the pie is allocated as far as more major categories. Of the, of the changes in the 2020 budget, uh, in 2020, of course, we have uh, planned uh, elections, including a presidential. So we're going from two elections to four. Um, transfer of, again, as I mentioned, transfer recycling to a new fund. This uh, by comparison purposes, reduces the general fund by roughly 319,000. And then property tax refunds, uh, we have a couple claims by some of our big box commercial developments, and I wanted to plan for the possibility of, of a refund, and so I uh, recommended an additional 65,000. I think 15,000 is 
currently uh, in, in the 2019 budget. Next are some of the other specialty funds, uh, special revenue funds, and again, we have a series of these uh, roughly 16 individual funds within the special revenue. Park forestry and open space is one of those. Uh, the goal is to build or construct Evergreen Park Bridge. This is funds received from the National Resource Damage Assessment. Uh, we think we'll receive roughly $205,000. Uh, this activity is associated with the Sheboygan River cleanup. And again, damage assessment uh, the city uh, anticipates receiving. Next is a brand new fund. Uh, neighborhood Revitalization Fund. This is uh, as a result of fairly new state legislation which allows communities to, to hold open for one additional year beyond the normal sort of termination date of a TIF district, a tax incremental district, by the city holding open uh, TIF district number 11 for one additional year and transferring that excess uh, increment uh, into this new Neighborhood Revitalization Fund the city will have an additional $712,000 of funds to use. The requirement by the state legislature is that it should be used for residential or neighborhood revitalization. In the 2020 budget, uh, roughly 420,000 of that 712 is, is identified as potential uses. Uh, upper floor rental rehab, residential facade grant, public improvements such as sidewalks and crosswalks, and then overall administration of those programs are proposed for 2020. Next, Park Impact Fee Fund. Again, this is for those alders that have been here uh, several years. Uh, there is a $547 per residential unit, a fee that was uh, in, imposed, I think, in 2017, or maybe late 16. Uh, this, this fund continues to grow with the activity expected yet in 2019 and the, and the additional projects that have been already publicly discussed with an construction anticipated to commence in 2020, we expect to be close to a quarter of a million dollars worth of revenue in a fund balance to again, use for park projects. Um, so 219, uh, in 2019, 293 residential units are expected to pay into this fund, and in 2020, 275 additional units. So a lot of activities occurring in our community. Uh, uses for the projects, uh, 25,000 for additional ADA related walkways in our parks, and then $25,000 associated with a new playground uh, in Moose Park. Another major source of city's tax revenue uh, is, is funding and supporting the Mead Public Library. The recommendation is to increase our funding levels uh, to approximately 24,000. Um, this represents a slight decrease of additional levy uh, that was added to their funds in 2019 budget where 63,000 additional dollars uh, were recommended and approved. Again, I'm recommending an additional 24,000 above and beyond that for 2020 budget. Tourism fund, uh, with the pay payment, full payment or payoff of the uh, Blue Harbor Conference Center debt, all room taxes now is available to share with uh, visitsheboygan.com. Um, the, with some new hotels that are coming online, we expect uh, the room tax amount to grow. Uh, so 1.4 is the amount we expect to receive in 2019 and up to 1.7 of additional room tax dollars in 2020. City gets to retain 30% of that. Um, and we, so we expect our share to increase by almost $300,000. Uh, uses of, of that tourism fund, as I mentioned previously, uh, transfer to the general fund, an additional uh, 170, roughly 175,000, which is roughly 10% of the room tax estimated to be received, and then transfer to debt service to help with our debt uh, service payments, uh, 320, almost $330,000. Uh, the next special revenue fund is Harbor Center Marina. Uh, the recommendation is to transfer an additional an additional $225,000 in calendar year 2020 to help reduce the debt uh, that is in the Harbor Center Marina. Uh, to give you a sense as far as, uh, I guess, the success we've had in transferring money and trying to reduce the debt, in 2016, there was $6.8 million of debt uh, still on our books. And by the end of 2020, we hope to be under $5 million. So we're 
slowly making progress. And this was one of the items mentioned by our auditors as far as uh, a large amount of debt still outstanding for that fund. But again, uh, it's not going to be erased overnight. And as long as we're making progress, uh, I hope you, uh, the community, and the auditors uh, will feel we're making substantial progress. Next category is debt service fund. Uh, again, to give you a sense as far as the amount of taxes needed to support our tax levy, I thought it was helpful to identify of our tax rate what per thousand is being used for our tax service, our, our, our debt service uh, from taxes. Uh, $1.30 is the equivalent debt service that's being allocated to the debt service fund. This is similar to 2019 and 2018 uh, uh, tax rate, and again, this is equalized. Um, in 2020, the recommendation is to issue 3.6 million of non-TID related debt. Uh, if you add TID uh, related debt, it's approximately 3 million additional or overall $6.5 million. This is substantially less than the amount of debt issued in 2019, it was over 10 million. Debt service, as far as uh, net debt outstanding, you can see from 2017 to 2020, it's uh, increasing by roughly uh, 15 million. But when you look at our ratio of net debt to capacity, it's going from roughly 21 to 29 percent. Most uh, our debt schedule is fairly aggressive, with almost all of our debt being paid off in the first 10 years of, of creating a debt schedule. Next, I'd like to discuss capital projects. Superior Avenue, $2 million. So this is North 29th to Taylor, uh, Boots and Sports Complex. Again, 590,000. This, this funding source originally came from tourism fund or room tax money. Union Avenue, 500,000. Uh, Georgia Avenue to Taylor. This is associated with uh, upgrades to the approximate area of where the hospital, uh, Aurora Hospital will be constructed. So just east of Taylor uh, to Georgia Avenue. Geely Avenue from Calumet Drive to North 23rd, 700,000. And last is a $750,000 new roof uh, at Shoreline uh, Transit, uh, of which we expect half will be funded by the federal government. Next, identify some additional larger capital projects. Uh, fire Station number two improvements, 318,000. And last is 195,000 for uh, HVAC and, sec and security related uh, entry systems at our police station. Tax incremental district, which are typically projects to leverage new developments by the private sector or to shore up uh, some of these areas that are in need of revital revitalization. Uh, in TIF 14, uh, additional uh, $50,000 is identified for branding or wayfinding signage. This is primarily in our downtown area. Uh, Badger State's Badger State Loft uh, redevelopment project on the former tannery uh, this roughly three and a half million is our estimates for improving Illinois, Maryland, and S South 11th Street. Uh, TID 17, this is the uh, part of the innovation district along Indiana Avenue with the expectation that there will be an innovation hub or fresh tech hub, roughly 300,000 to construct a parking surface parking lot. Also in that general vicinity is to purchase uh, a, a former railroad Union Pacific Railroad right away, uh, referred to as Shoreline 400, uh, and uh, roughly 1.3 is the estimated purchase price. On Niagara, east of 14th Street, so this is adjacent to the future LTC uh, class, classroom site, half a million dollars to make that improvement. So this is again between the former boat doctors and uh, Bitter Newman. Internal service funds, uh, note changes in workers' compensation, liability insurance, health insurance fund. Uh, recommendation is for a 5% increase for health as well as a 5% increase in dental insurance and the elimination of HSA contributions uh, at, at a savings of $229,000. Uh, wastewater utility fund, uh, $750,000 for additional reconstruction or relining of sanitary sewers. So as the city continues to work on reconstructing streets, uh, specifically surface pavement, we, of course, want to be disciplined in not making those that additional investment without checking what's underneath the pavement. So we, we look at the water sewer lines 
and the expectation is we'll have roughly $750,000 of, in essence, companion-related infrastructure projects to our street projects. Other improvements at the treatment plant are rebuilding uh, a floating digester cover as well as uh, a digester heat exchanger, uh, both projects for $450,000 or $150,000. In the parking and transit fund area, no material changes in service, uh, but there is an additional $70,000 parking utility street sweeper. Boat facility fund, no major change, no material change. Um, one of my last slides is about our proposed uh, recycling utility fund. Uh, the recommendation is in January of 2020 to start the monthly charges. Um, the budget identifies a $4 per month charge. Um, in the months of April through May in 2020, uh, both the trucks will, we will receive the trucks as well as we will begin receiving the carts, both for recycling and, and recycling uh, service uh, pickup. Um, May of 2020, uh, the goal is to start up that month. Um, one thing that is new for 2020 is uh, our garbage and recycling processor has identified a, a first time charge to process our recycling. Uh, currently, we, we get a zero per ton charge. Um, what's been identified in Public Works Committee, we'll be discussing this soon, is a $90 per ton charge. This is more on a per ton basis than what we're charged for disposal of our garbage. This adds up to $363,000. As I mentioned, this is a new charge. And then last is uh, the initial uh, lease rate of our recycling carts, uh, roughly $31,000. Uh, beginning in 20, 2021, uh, this uh, initial lease will go up to roughly $83,000 per year for a total of 10 years uh, lease for our carts. Um, that really is a summary of, of uh, the details associated with the 2020 budget. Uh, again, uh, this, the um, budget as well as the budget brief have been um, posted on the city's website. Hard copies are available at City Hall. Hard copy will be available at the public library. Um, and again, I really want to thank all uh, the management team and their support staff uh, Marty Harverson, being a, uh, fairly new to our staff as the Director of Finance, this was his first full-fledged budget, so a little bit of baptism, <clears throat> baptism by fire for him. Uh, Carrie Aarons uh, put a lot of work into this as well. As I mentioned, this is the first year the city's been able to use our accounting payroll software to generate information, export it into a sp spreadsheet, where in the past the city worked solely off of a spreadsheet and then tried to make it fit into our accounting system after it was approved. Uh, so with our new, uh, our new process, we're able to make one change in one fund and instantly be able to see how it ultimately uh, floats to the top and affects our overall uh, budget summary. So uh, definitely in advance uh, for, for our organization and will substantially improve uh, the process uh, in, in 2021. So again, I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Daryl, thank you very much for that presentation. Thank you to you, the finance uh, department, and all the other department heads who worked hard on the budget to uh, fit into this year's program. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. This will include items uh, 3.2 through 3.7, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all our O's, receive all our C's, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Wolf? Sorry. Oh. Alderperson Ackley? Oh, there he goes. Yep. Jeff? Yeah. 
10 ayes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 will lay over. Items 4.2 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, um, item 5.1 is resolution number 74 of 1920 by Alderpersons Wolf and Donahue, authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city uh, in the matter of Walmart Stores, Inc. versus the city of Sheboygan, and authorize payment for said services. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and adopt the resolution. Second. Is there any uh, objection to suspension? Seeing none, uh, please proceed. Just a motion to adopt. I move to adopt. And a second? Second. Thank you very much. That motion is before us. Is there any further discussion? Alderperson Sorensen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess I'll, my, I don't know who my question is directed towards, either you or, or Daryl. Um, I didn't see an IFC attached to this document in Board Docs, but if, if you just kind of want to explain um, the cost and the timeline and the impact that this is going to have on the city, um, I know that this is uh, regarding one of those dark star uh, um, issues that the city's been facing, um, but if you just want to speak more on that, um, that'd be helpful. You're good. Uh, I can specifically address uh, the claim that has been filed uh, on behalf of Walmart stores. Uh, City Attorney Adams uh, can probably discuss a little bit in more detail uh, outside legal counsel, potential cost and time associated with that. Uh, Walmart stores uh, has made a request or a claim against the city asking that uh, undue assessment of property has occurred. Uh, the, currently the Walmart property on the city's south side is assessed at approximately $13 million. Their request is for this property to value to be dropped to a little over $6 million. Uh, this is the, I think, third consecutive year uh, a claim has been made by Walmart. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Boren. Questions, Mr. Mayor? Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I see in, in the documents that I read for the council meeting that this is going to this is going to be combined with a previous lawsuit. Uh, I can't I can't remember us discussing. Uh, Attorney Adams, do you have an idea of how much it's cost us to defend the lawsuits currently in progress? And uh, did we place any cap on what we were going to spend on these? And maybe would it be wise to do so? There's no cap. We've spent nothing so far because we haven't been billed one penny. Um, it, we're, it, she's done a lot of work for us. As far as what it will likely cost us, um, by combining uh, all three lawsuits, it, it really does reduce the margin uh, that, that gets added by the third year. I, I don't expect a significant additional amount of cost based on the third year. The primary cost will less be for the attorney's fees, and we'll probably be more getting our experts to just simply add a little extra work for the third year uh, in, in their reports. Thank you. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, just as an initial matter, um, so I, I remember the uh, surprise in attorney fees uh, with, uh, associated with Blue Harbor uh, when we did not get regular billings. And um, I might suggest that that's something that we, we probably don't want to be surprised about. And I, I'm thinking that Attorney Seibel would be willing to do interim billing for us, um, even if payment is not expected to at least uh, give us a sense of, of, of what we're looking at. Having her involved in uh, all three of these cases, I think, is a large advantage to us if this kind of thing keeps going forward. I, I know that um, Attorney Adams and Attorney Cameron are gaining extensive experience <laughs> with what's involved in defending these things. I just wanted to say that I certainly appreciated um, uh, Representative Katzman for Poggle at our uh, opening ceremony today but it continues to trouble me, and I guess I, ju I just can't understand 
why our legislature refuses to move this ball forward in terms of closing the dark store loophole. The vote that we had in the city of Sheboygan, and Mayor, you can correct me, it was at least 80% in an advisory referendum to close the dark store loophole. I think that is the sentiment throughout the state um, as um, local taxpayers are required to pick up these you know, fairly hefty adjustments and, and, and our city administrator gave us a sense of what that might be uh, in the coming year. Um, so again, I'm just going to publicly express my disappointment, um, just kind of a calm way of putting it. Disapproval might be a little stronger um, and just suggest that we somehow let our legislators know over and over again just how unjust this is to local taxpayers. So that's, my, my pipes didn't work, but you know, now I get to blow a little bit more, so thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen, did you have another question? Yeah. Two follow-ups, uh, thanks to Alderperson Donahue. Um, uh, um, I, I'm not gonna make a motion, but just a recommendation, but that we just CC or send um, any action on this to our state representatives just so that they're aware of the impact that, the, the, the ongoing impact that this is having on, on the city and the taxpayers of the city as well. So just Point taken. a friendly Thank recommendation. You. Seeing no other lights, ask the clerk to call the roll. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.8 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 117 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 68 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne, approving an amendment to the project plan of the tax incremental district number 12 in the city of Sheboygan and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I uh, move to uh, receive, oops, sorry. There we go. Um, I um, uh, move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. That motion is before us for discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 118 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom was referred resolution number 69 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, approving the amendment to the project plan of tax incremental district number 13, City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That uh, documents before us for discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 119 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred resolution number 71 of 1920 by the Alder, by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city officials to keep, take necessary action to obtain property located at 3427 Union Avenue and recommends adopting the resolution. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the report of committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was gonna ask the uh, city attorney on this one, uh, what the process is. I believe this must be the property that's on the north end of the acuity lot across the street from the new Aurora lot. So this would be, if I understand this correctly, Attorney Adams, this would be an uh, eminent do domain uh, in getting this property. 
Uh, can you kind of go over the steps <coughs> and what's determined as the fair market value for this property? Well, I'd start by saying that it doesn't have to be eminent domain. So the first thing we'll be doing uh, is continuing negotiations in hopes of not having to exercise uh, eminent domain. Um, however, uh, should it get to that point, uh, the process would involve uh, getting a, um, an appraisal uh, that's done in a particular way. We'd have to hire a, a neutral appraisal to do that. Uh, and uh, we would come back uh, to the council and uh, uh, if you approved of that, we would make an offer uh, to, uh, based on that appraisal to the uh, uh, property owner. Um, they can take it or they can not take it. Uh, but if they don't take it, uh, we can then proceed to basically condemn the property and take it for, for that cost. Um, as the process continues, though, we always have the opportunity to continue to negotiate. Uh, and in this case, because we do have multiple parties involved, uh, I suspect that uh, uh, we'll be working pretty hard at that negotiation piece in hopes of avoiding uh, uh, having to condemn the property, but which we'll do if we have to. If I could just follow up, Mayor, I've been, I've been following some of the uh, property ac uh, acquisitions down in the Foxconn project down in that area, and uh, some of those, some of those uh, final settlements on some of those property while coming out very, well, very, very well for the property owners in most cases uh, gets to be very, very expensive and almost unreasonable of what some of these property owners are getting for their property uh, could we anticipate something like this happening on that property? Well, th the way the statute works is that it is supposed to be based on an actual market value. Uh, obviously, there's, there can be argument about what the actual market value is. Uh, my understanding is with uh, Foxconn, there are other um, political <laughs> factors uh, at play uh, which... Uh, have tended to cause that, that cost to increase. I wouldn't expect that we're going to be paying multiple times uh, the assessed value of a property. That's not the way the law works. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. <clears throat> Alder Person Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I will be taking an abstention on this resolution due to the fact that I am currently employed at Acuity. Thank you for noting that. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes, one abstain. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 120 of 1920 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Two months referred resolution number 73 of 1920 by Alderperson Sorensen and Mitchell. Rescinding resolution number 41-03-04 and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under general ordinances, item 7.1 and 7.2 will be referred to, referred to the Public Works Committee. And then next, we'll move on to other matters authorized by law. Call on City Attorney uh, Charles Adams. Uh, 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2020 and June 30, 2021. That'll be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. And then uh, we'll go on to uh, a motion to adjourn. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.